Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode in my introduction to Node.js tutorial series. Now in this series we are going to be starting uh, learning what's called Node.js and that is what's called a backend technology. Now on my channel for the last couple of months I have been covering quite a few different topics but all of them have actually been focused on front-end technologies um, and uh, I, I can like do a, gets, or a Google search to kind of figure out the difference uh, or to give a good explanation of the difference, uh, but front-end versus back-end development. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I click on this. So essentially, uh, the term front-end refers to building user interfaces, which means building uh, websites or building app interfaces, while the back-end means the server, application, database that work behind the scenes to deliver information to the user. And a good example of this is, for example, uh, Google Sheets. Uh, if you use Google Docs, Google Sheets, basically the website design, the actual buttons, um, and we can, well, I don't know if it's easy to go there because I'm not signed into a Google account, but um, if I just search up Google Docs um, and go images. Um, so like for example here, here's like a, a, an example Google Docs kind of page. If this whole thing here, this icon here, all of this text, um, kind of just the layout of the site overall, it was made by a front-end developer. The actual data, like how do they get your text of your document? How do they actually know, like what is the text for this document? How do they know when the last edit was three hours ago? The backend data or the backend server basically holds that data and uh, it's used to kind of support the front end by giving it information. So that's what creating backend means. Um, and of course, that'll get clearer as this series goes on because we will learn to integrate this with kind of front end technologies to create a even more powerful website than we have been able to so far. Um, so the gist of what we're gonna do today is just do some basic installation. Uh, the installation does take, a, is a little bit more involved when it comes to backend, just because you need more tools and more, um, you kind of more components than just VS Code to get started with backend. And then we'll just be doing a very simple hello world. So to get started, you just wanna come here into Google and search up VS Code. And then by doing that, uh, you should get this first result here, code.visualstudio.com. You can click the download tab or the download button and you'll be taken to this page here. Uh, download the uh, install, you know, download the installer for whatever operating system you're using, Windows, Linux, or Mac. Um, and then of course, uh, once you run that, it will kind of look somewhat like this. Uh, not exactly, the color might be different, um, and the, you won't see the folders here, but it'll look fairly similar. Now to get started, uh, you want to find a folder where you want to store all of your code, and you can click File, Open Folder, and when you do that, you can basically um, select the folder which you use all your code for, and this is the folder that I've chosen, and this is all of my code for my YouTube, but I'm, I'm on this specific intro to Node.js kind of folder here. So um, once you do that, you can go ahead and just leave that. And then we're going to install some extensions. Uh, now, actually, you know what, we're, we might actually save the extensions for later, uh, just so I can um, figure out what's necessary. But so, you know, once you have your folder opened, that we can consider this step finished, installing VS Code. Um, now, if you are on Windows, you're going to have to install a tool called WSL. Uh, just for consistency, I want to keep uh, kind of the Linux environment consistent uh, slash Unix environment across uh, all of the platforms that I'll be kind of tutorialing for. So uh, I'll, I'll walk you through how to install this. If you are on a, a Mac or a Linux uh, device, you can pull up what's called your terminal. Uh, if you're using Linux, I assume you already know uh, how to work the terminal. But if you're on Mac, go ahead and click your applications, your launch pad, which is the little rocket ship uh, on the bottom and then you can search up terminal. And um, do not go to command prompt, but uh, there should be one that says terminal, and then click on that, and uh, you can go ahead and skip in the bottom section. There should be a couple chapters in this video. You can skip to the Node.js installation part, but um, for everyone on Windows, let's go ahead and start that. So you wanna open up a tab and just search up um, WSL, and, uh, or you know WSL Windows, maybe. Um, and once you search that up, you should be able to um, come here. The first kind of result, or one of the first results, should be install Windows subsystem for Linux, and this should be on docs.microsoft.com, um, obviously because uh, Windows and just WSL are both made by Microsoft. So, um, you know, there's, there's this whole kind of uh, 
steps, there's all of these steps to installing WSL, uh, just go through manually. So first step, enable the Windows subsystem for Linux. So you want to copy all of this code here. And then you actually want to open a Power, uh, PowerShell instance. So you want to come here down to your Windows uh, Start button and then just search up PowerShell. And then you'll see Windows PowerShell here. You can right click it and hit Run as Administrator uh, since it says to run it as Administrator like that. Um, and of course, uh, once you have that up and running, you can go ahead and paste in this command. I've already done that, um, and I can, you know, I'm, a, you know, I'm not sure if it does anything for me since I've already installed it, but I'm fairly sure it doesn't. So by doing that, it'll say enabling features um, like that, and then it'll uh, do that. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel it. Uh, so that it does that, and then step two is just check your requirements for running WSL two, which is recommended because it's faster. Um, so you actually can just skip this step for the most part. If you have a newer computer, it'll it'll work. And then you can enable the virtual machine feature. This is another command that you just copy and paste into uh, Windows PowerShell. And then you want to download the Linux kernel update package, which you can click on this and run it. Um, and then once you're there, you can go ahead and run this also in PowerShell, which I have already done because I'm running WSL2. And the final step is to go to these links and install. I recommend doing Ubuntu uh, 18.04 or 20.04 LTS. Uh, in fact, I think I used 20.04. Um, and this is just takes you to the Microsoft Store page. Um, and you can just click on the Get button. You click on that. It'll open up your Microsoft Store. And, um, and then you should be able to uh, kind of install uh, WSL, the final step, which is installing the correct Linux distribution. So uh, you just click on that and see it's installed for me, but you can hit install here. And once you have that finished, you have successfully installed WSL. Now you may be, uh, you may be wondering, what is WSL? Basically, uh, there are three main operating systems, Windows, Linux, and Mac. Uh, Mac terminal, like I was saying to run, uh, basically is based somewhat on Linux. Uh, so you know, the, the whole way you work the terminal, quote unquote, works the same on Mac as it does on Linux. Windows uh, was actually not built on the same kind of foundation, but enabling something called WSL, which Microsoft has created for developers specifically, allows us to access a terminal that works just like Linux and works just like Mac. So it just makes it easier for me to make these tutorials. That way I don't have to specify different installation steps for different operating systems because it'll work consistently across all three operating systems. So um, once you have that installed, we can go ahead and check off that box. Um, and let me actually just come and sorry about the birds chirping in the background, but um, let me just quickly go through this. Okay, so yeah, um, for the most part, you don't have to go all the way down here. You just have to finish the installation, which is right here. Um, and once you have that done, you should have WSL working. Um, and it might actually require you to restart your, your device, but that should be all fine when you're done. So um, the last installation step is to run something called Node.js, uh, or to install something called Node.js. Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, once you first install WSL, uh, you can run a PowerShell uh, kind of instance. And I'm actually not sure the command it might just be WSL. Yeah, there it is. So um, on when you first start out, you can run a PowerShell. It doesn't have to be an administrator, and you can click W or you can type in WSL, and that will open up a Linux terminal. Now, now notice um, this terminal works uh, just like Linux, and I'm going to teach you a couple basic commands to kind of get the gist of how to use this. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to figure out how I can make the text a little bit bigger since it's a little bit small to see. Um, there we go. Okay, so uh, let me just fix the sizing on this. So the gist of how to use WSL is, or, or how to use Linux terminal in general, and uh, if you're here on Mac or Linux as well, the terminal will work the same. Every command I type in here will work on the terminal. So the first command you need to know is ls, and all it'll do is it'll list out your possible folders and files. So you can see I'm in the folder uh, slash mnt slash c slash users, um, if you are a Windows user, uh, user, you'll notice this is the users folder. And again, I'm in um, Matthew now, and I can go to my desktop by typing in cd and then space the folder name that you want to go to. So you're in, I'm, now I'm in desktop, and you notice here I have all of my desktop kind of shortcuts listed when I type ls. So ls and, uh, and cd. And of course, you can type clear to clear your screen. Um, on top of that, another thing you can do is um, you can type in our, uh, for now, let's go ahead and actually just CD 
um, I have a YouTube folder on my desktop, and then there's a slash meaning go further, and then I have a Matthew Lin YT folder in that. So if I type that, it'll take me to my Matthew Lin YT, and if I type in LS, I have all of my kind of YouTube folders. So I'm gonna CD into the back end, and then I'll CD into intro to Node.js, which is the folder I created for this series. And then if I type in LS again, you'll notice there's a one dash intro, which is another folder, one dash intro. Um, and finally, now, if I type in ls a final time, you'll see this readme.md, which is the same readme.md that I'm circling with my cursor here. So that's the gist of installing, um, of, of getting your terminal working, and you want to navigate to the folder you're using like this. Um, so now uh, I'm going to search up how to install, um, how to install Node.js on Linux. And then um, another actual step that we're going to have to add in that I forgot about um, is we're going to add a homebrew for Mac. Um, and this will allow us to use brew. Uh, so homebrew uh, Mac install. Homebrew is a reputable tool. You can look it up. You can do your research on it. Um, it's basically a programmer's tool to install packages uh, because Linux uses a package manager called apt, which is not available on Mac. So in order to install it, you basically copy and paste this command into your terminal. Um, and you can actually install this on Linux as well, but it, there's no point. It's mainly for Mac. Uh, and once you have that done, go ahead and uh, just, uh, you can come on to the next step here. So how to install Node.js on Linux now. Um, Node.js.org slash download. Um, and then see, okay, so let's come here to Debian and Ubuntu based, uh, based distributions. Uh, trying to find... Uh, yeah, so if you're using Homebrew, if you're on Mac, you can just type brew install node, and that will be uh, just fine. And then um, trying to find the proper way to uh, install this. Okay, so you know what? Uh, so yeah, if you're using Homebrew, if you're on Mac, just type in brew install node uh, as listed, I think, as listed right here. And then if you are not on Mac and you are on Linux, uh, specifically since we're on Ubuntu, uh, you can click on here and this actually might okay so basically uh, you can come to this github page here and based on the version of linux you're using uh we can install you can click on debian and ubuntu based distributions um and right here so installation instructions you can just copy so this is node.js version 15.x um so you can basically copy and paste this command like this and if you're on WSL, again, come to that PowerShell that you ran WSL and you can paste this in here, um, paste that in like that, um, which I will not run because I already have a node installed and that might uh, mess up my current install if I do it again. And then of course, naturally you will copy that finally, or actually never mind. Um, this, this should just be you need, what you need to use because this is for Ubuntu and this is for Debian. Um, so yeah, just copy and paste this command here and you will have node installed. And same thing with uh, Mac, once you have Node installed, you should be able to tell by restarting your terminal, you can close it and reopen it. And if you type in node-v and you get something here, I'm, I'm running actually Node version 12, uh, so I'm not running 14, but it'll, it'll work very similarly in 14. Um, if this is actually returning something, then you've successfully installed Node.js. So go ahead and check off that box and we can conclude our installation. Finally, um, since this video is running a bit long, since you know installation for backend is a little bit involved, like I said, to finally just test and show that this is JavaScript, you can type in Node, and then it'll say welcome to Node.js version, whatever version you're using. You can type in console.log, which is standard JavaScript. And again, you should know JavaScript if you're coming into this, or at least basic understanding of it, and then hello world. And simply put, that will print hello world as it would in a website terminal except now we're running this without a website, and that's what Node.js is. It's running JavaScript as a backend server instead of on a website, um, which is pretty cool. So you can type in Control-C twice to exit, um, and once you're done, you're back in your terminal, and you are ready to move on to the next episode. So if you want to see this tutorial series as it kind of unfolds, you can check out my playlist, which is linked in the description, where I'll be adding to daily. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for notifications whenever I post new videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.